The Gemara Yushalmi says that the Arba Kaisis is Kanega the Arba Banim. That means that every child that you say there has a Kais that we celebrate, we raise up to him. He has questions, the Torah has answers. But there's one child, the fifth child, that's not even at the Seder. And for that, says Rup Shimon Seifer, for that we pour also a Kais. That's the Kais of Elio Anavi. The Kais of Elio, and we wait for Elio to come and gather these children that are not at home. Let's be medactic. What does Elio actually do when he comes? What does it say? So you would think that Elio goes out to the bars and the clubs and the lakes and he gathers all of these children and he says, do tshuva, and he works on these kids to come back. But that's not what it says. It says that Elio is going to come, That's the first job. He's not going to go out first to the clubs and the bars. He's going to go to the tatas and the mamas, the parents, and he's going to say, why aren't your kids at your seder? And you're going to say, what do you mean? He's a liar, he's a ganaf, he's a manipulator, he's selfish, he's on drugs. And Elio Anabi is going to say, close your mind and open your heart. Because there are kids like this who are acting this way, and that's not who they are. You knew this kid growing up. These parents who don't have their kids at home are being advised bad advice. That takes a kid who's going through a hard time, a temporary hard time, as Rav Pam says, and they make it permanent. No, there has to be consequences today. You have to conform today. Think back. You knew this kid at 7, 8, 9, 10. Yummy, delicious, smart. Don't you realize that something is happening here? Why can't you open your heart? and have your kid at your table. There are four children there. There's even a Russia at the table. Your kid is worse than the Russia? No, he can't come home. She can't walk in the house this way. Where is this advice coming from? If you look at the Chazanish, if you look at the Baal Shem Tev, they gave very specific instructions. There are hundreds of Rabbanim today, Apidas Torah, that can guide you. But unfortunately, there are therapists, there are professionals, there are experts, and even some Rabbanim who have this mean streak in them, that tell you when this car, this kid, who was once sweet and smart, if he can't conform today, kares, kares. Where does this come from? Go to Rav Gersh and Edelstein, Eretz Yisrael, go to Rav Steinman. Is this what we're supposed to do? Avad Anisht. Look at the Chazanish, he said, Yinasu lemashcham be'avoy soy sahava. Is that avoy soy sahava? V'loy l'tchoy som cholila. I want to tell you, that I have about 300 families. I only take the most extreme cases. 90% of the calls that I get, I don't even take. So I'm taking all those cases that were manipulators, were shoyim and ganovim, and drug addicts, and selling drugs, the worst, stealing from the parents. I know all those stories. How many, right now, how many TP parents are missing that child by the Seder because the child doesn't want to come home because of conflict with the parents? Zero. Zero. And every single family has their own Das Torah that writes a letter that is giving exact instruction, exactly what to do and not to do. Everything is being done Alpi Torah. So if you're a parent out there, or you know somebody, you know somebody who has a, a problem with a child, and they're getting advice that is separating, severing, doing curries for this child, it's the wrong advice. I have parents who come to me, and many, I have 300 families, so... I know who those people are out there. I just don't wage wars. That's not my place. I know those people, those experts, who consistently give advice that makes the matzav worse. If you're a parent out there, before you go to speak to someone, say, I'm not paying you to tell me how to lose my child. I don't need advice, even free advice, on how to lose a child. Do you know how to help me save my child? Do you know how to help me have a family where everybody's at the table and in peace? Can you give me the advice that has the highest chance that my child will get married? I'll pee. I'll be Kedusha according to uh, the right way. We're nearing almost the count of a hundred from kids that are coming back. And everything is done, I'll be tired. And then people out there and they say, oh, Avi's so extreme. We're dealing with an extreme situation. If you're a family that doesn't have your kid at your Seder table, you are doing something very extreme, extremely wrong. And it's usually the parents are usually wonderful parents when they come to me. They say, how are we so misguided? And it's usually the same people out there. I get truckloads of customers coming from certain people out there. They know who they are. That consistently give advice, line in the sand, line in the sand, consequences. And it takes a kid that had 101 fever, all of a sudden, 104 fever. What's going on over here? 
Calm down the situation. De-escalate the situation. Have a calm home. Have the child comfortable at home the way that he is. And then you get more than you got from consequences. There's a family that I know that when the kid started spinning out, the mother was a therapist and says, no, the kid has to know consequences. So instead of just being calm for a couple of minutes, you know, give us a couple of days here. No, everything is consequence, consequence. The kid's in jail now. You ruined his whole life. Because he has to know, yeah, it's very important to teach consequences. Not when someone is going through a crisis. Not when someone is going through a meltdown. Not when someone is out of their mind. When they're sick, when they're in pain. You can learn consequences next year. It's a very nice thing. You taught him when he was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right now we need to take a little bit of a break. Right now that's not so important. Consequences. You don't kill someone over consequences. It's one of the things in Chinuch. You don't cut off an arm. I had a, I had a parent who threw the kid out of the house for almost a year. I said, you're right. But you did the wrong pu'ula. The kid was wrong. You needed some kind of a, a punishment, but you cut off an arm. Would you cut off his arm physically? How do you throw a kid out of the house? Why do you feel that's necessary? With, with 300 family plus of kids, the worst kids in the world, everybody's home. Everybody's home. And if you're worried about Das Torah, think about it. Is it Das Torah to sever, sever a, a child, to do kares, to make your child feel so uncomfortable? No, we didn't throw him out. He doesn't feel comfortable being in your home for Pesach. There's something wrong with that. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said that we open up the door for Elio. Like Rabbi Shimon Seifer said that the Kaisal Elio is Keneged, the, the Ben that's, that's not even at the table. He said, we're opening up those doors at that time. And we're saying, come in. Where is the Ben Chamishi? Where is my child? Come into my house. Don't wait till Pesach. Don't wait till Pesach to say, where is my child? If you don't treat your child the proper way a whole year, he won't be at your Pesach Seder. Wake up and realize that starting after Pesach, we will embark on a different mahalach, a mahalach that will ensure and guarantee that your child will be at your Pesach Seder next year. Realize it doesn't have to be that way. Realize that there are options for you. Al Pitoira. Follow the Baal Shem Tev, what he said. Follow what the Chazanish said. Look at the Rav Pam. Why do you have to be smarter than Rav Pam? He writes out exactly everything on Mayur Derech. I could send you everything. Now's not the time. I want you to know that every kid that's out there wants to be home. But for some reason, as part of the whole problem that they're going through, usually trauma and abuse, they need to be accepted as they are. And they want to be home. I don't even meet the kids anymore because they're good. They want to come home. I don't need the kid, the last person in the world that can help these kids in trouble and crisis, post-risk, are these kids. I don't even need to meet them. I need to meet mommy and daddy. The heishiv leif avais albanim. Automatically, you'll have guaranteed v'leif banim al avaisam. The children's hearts are with us. We're the ones who are saying, no, I can't look at you. You can't behave this way. You can't bring this into the house. I understand there's a lot of issues. The other kids are in issues in Tyre and Kedusha. I understand it. So does Yerba and Edelstein. So does the Tyre. So does the Chazanish. You have to work on all those issues. But losing a child is not standing up to the Nesoyen that Hashem gave you. So chas v'shalom to lose a child. V'heshev leiv avis You'll see. Leiv banim. They'll come back. Alav